Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. This mess that we are in right now, globally, um, is not because it just happened. You know, it just some people just uh, woke up in the morning with a hard on and said, we're going to fuck the world now. I don't think that uh, that's the case. I think some of these things were planned and I think they developed of, or uh, escalated from one particular, one particular moment or incident, and that is Ukraine, into what we have right now. Uh, and people are responsible for that ignition of this garbage, planetary garbage, should be held accountable. That fact that Russia could not negotiate with Al Capone and his weasels regarding Ukraine, and then invaded to defend their people from being killed by the regime in Kiev, because if you remember, that's how it started. The guys in Kiev sent tanks in Donbas, not Donbas sent tanks to Kiev. Remember in 2014, after the bloody coup, supported by the uh, lovers of democracy and freedom? Okay, now we got that right. So, with this, Russia said, yeah, you want to destroy us? Well, we're going to show you what we have in store. So I'm going to show you what we have in store for you in Africa, in Asia, in Middle East. And now things just go like a, a snowball, just rolling over and going bigger and bigger. So what happened? Guess what? Putin guarantees or at least provides support to Kim Jong-un, the woodchuck from North Korea. So he defends North Korea, North Korea is going to come towards China, is going to come towards Russia. So these guys lost. No, that's not just because the Russians, as I said, woke up in the morning and said, we want the world now. No, that's a consequence. You ignited that shit with us. We're going to take care of you. We're going to break the whole world in two spheres. Your garbage, your plantation of about up to 40 countries kept over there with blackmail threats and weasels and we're gonna have the other side we'll see who's who what's what who's isolated so let me show you two articles here that will um, show you putin's desire to defend probably allies remember you, uh, russia has um its um protocol of using nuclear weapons is is like this also one of them i think they have four so one is if one of our uh, allies um North Korea in this case, is attacked with conventional weapons or nuclear weapons, we will react. We have the right, we will ignite the uh, protocol of using nuclear weapons. Good proposition, South Korea and Japan? Yeah, why don't you get more American troops on your territory? So shows who's who, what's what. Garbage, man. Ukrainska Pravda. Putin wants to visit North Korea. Lavrov arrives to build bridges. So Lavrov the foreign minister of Russia is visiting North Korea for two days as we speak right now. So he's over there to build bridges for Putin to show up and meet Kim Jong-un over there. Sergei Lavrov, the Russian minister of foreign affairs, arrived in Pyongyang on October 18th for a two-day visit. Now, details. At the start of this week, Lavrov escorted President Vladimir Putin during his visit to Beijing and had meetings with his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi. So, you see, these guys, nuclear powers, mind you, they get together because Russia is isolated. He is expected to hold a meeting with his North Korean counterpart, Cho Son Hui, and the two sides will discuss the issue of bilateral military and economic cooperation as well as a possible visit to Pyongyang by Putin. All right, so let's go and see what the Russians are saying about that. Per Sputnik, Russia fully supports North Korea's desire to defend sovereignty, Lavrov. What does that mean in plain uh, language? We're going to come and help you if anybody attacks you. Got that? But they make it, make it a little bit more diplomatic and uh, semantically more, um, how do I put it, um, ingestible? by the population, by the ooh, remember? Russia fully supports the desire of North Korean authorities to defend the country's sovereignty, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Wednesday. Let's see what, uh, let's see the quote. So, 
And I'm quoting, the Russian Federation expresses its solidarity and full support in the desire of the DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, led by Chairman of the State Council Kim Jong-un, to defend its independence and the right of its people to determine their own destiny, end quote. Lavrov said during his visit to North Korea, Moscow values Pyongyang's support of Russia's special military operation in Ukraine, Lavrov added. Clear? All right, now we, we're clear. The foreign minister also said that his visit provides a good opportunity to review in detail latest agreements that were reached at the highest level. So, good job. This is a consequence of Ukraine. They couldn't get an understanding, the Russians with Al Capone and uh, obviously the weasels that are, yes, 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 yes. They could reach an agreement in December 2021. And the Russians said, if we get into Ukraine, if we get into Ukraine, we're going to turn things uh, on. And not only that, I think the reaction coming from the West, uh, so-called, with the sanctions kicking Russia out of SWIFT and all the sanctions with uh, Russian assets, stolen and now they want to use them for they use something that they it was not theirs okay how do you call that using someone else's garbage uh you know so anyway um all that said okay you're you're going this far oh you want to get involved with armenia now all right well we're going to take care of you we're going to activate our um little cells in africa south america and in asia why not and we're going to see how you actually are the victim here not us and i think that shows because look at the united states of america what does the united states of america do they have anything else but a few countries in europe a few countries in europe remember it's the united states and great britain these are the, the only two maybe poland i mean poland too but poland will look like the wind blows okay we're gonna go that way Right. And, and other, other little countries like estonia the baltic states lithuania latvia these countries are the ones that willingly, willingly, I would say, go with the United States of America, with, with Al Capone. The rest, they have to. So, Poland will go with the US, feeling, no, um, Russia and all that. They want Germany, they want Russia, they want everybody, the Poles, who lost their balls, unfortunately, after the elections. These idiots are, are going to be in bad shape. You're going to learn all kind of scientific data now. And uh, you got the Baltic states. These countries go with the United States. The rest don't. Don't. So, the United States, what did the United States gain? Nobody. No other country joined the United States. Have you, have you heard anybody else joining them? And you got Israel, obviously, that is the other way around. You know, uh, United States and uh, United States, Israel. Okay, now you got it. So, um, on, the, on the other hand, what's going on on the other side? They have the Shanghai cooperation, right? They have uh, BRICS. They have this, uh, uh, what at uh, Shang, not Shanghai, uh, where they um, are right now in, in China. I can't remember the road and something, some, I can't remember. Uh, the, where's 130 countries? 130 countries participate in Beijing right now. 130 out of 195. You take out the 40 from the U.S. plantation, which as I said, maybe three or four or five countries are willy-nilly with U.S. The rest, they have to. Because they're afraid and they are just grabbed, held in, their, in the U.S.'s grip. France would not go with the United States of America. Germany would not go. Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, all these countries. Spain, Portugal. These guys don't go with the United States because they like that. No, they go because everybody else is going. And they have a lot of uh, people who are, yes, sir. You know, you paid me, I will deliver. Or you helped me get elected. <coughs> And now I am going to deliver. So, who is actually the, um, uh, the so-called isolated one? Russia or these guys? I mean, you got to be... BRICS is expanding. As of now, I think BRICS has more power, economic power, than G7. What are you going to do about it? You can't do anything. Nobody's going to join you. Nobody's going to join you. Why? Because your past, your history caused so much damage to certain countries around the world that nobody want to associate themselves with you. That's a problem. Unless you make them. Uh, otherwise, they will not associate with you. Why? Because they know what's happening if they don't 
follow orders. And people, real people, don't want to follow orders. They want to be independent. They want to do whatever they want. But if you have someone who tells you what to do all the time, and if you don't listen, they're going to kick you in the teeth, or you see that happening to your neighbors, you get the hint. You don't want to live under this kind of terror. The time when it was that, you know, benevolence or America, the light of... Those, are, the, the, those times are gone. You know why? Mainly because it was not an alternative. Like the Soviet Union, that could have been used as bad, bad, bad. Now, Soviet Union collapsed and we see the world United States created. Inv bombarded Yugoslavia, invaded Iraq, invaded Afghanistan, destroyed Libya, got involved in the Middle East, tried to get Iran, got in Syria. So this is the freedom and democracy, the Pax Americana, these guys are trying to uh, push on us. I don't want that. I want peace. I don't want your peace. Because your peace, that means you're in charge. I don't want you to be in charge of anything. As I don't want to be in charge of you. <clears throat> anyway, here it is, uh, my friends. They fucked up too many times and people you know, gravitate towards something away from that. And in this case, that is Al Capone. Because Al Capone will get you. It, it, there's not, nothing in between. You're with me or against me. Well, really, I can't be uh, on my own? No. North Korea is a clear example of that. You're not with me, I'm going to destroy you. North Korea got uh, a nuclear. You can't do anything about it. What are you going to do? Sanctions, 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 like you're in charge of something. Why are you in charge? Who voted for you to be in charge? Nobody. Get the fuck out. <laughs> you can't. Why? Because I got this one. And I'm going to punch you. Now there's an alternative. China, Russia. And they got together. And so this is a response. This is a consequence of the, the opposition that Russia gave to Al Capone's attempted hegemony of this planet. That's what it is. Nothing else. Nothing else. And they will not recognize. They will claim, oh, these, the evil guys get together. Oh, the evil guys. Why is that? Because you designated them as evil, which, you know, you are pure and they're evil, which is not a garbage. Okay? And we have to fight them. And you know, not going to negotiate. Why? Because you think you got this one. As I always say, uh, uh, the lion on the savannah doesn't have to negotiate with anybody else. Unless it's another lion over there. And they try to kill the other lion and the other lion. Okay, because they got too strong. But they don't uh, negotiate with the hyenas or with the jackals or with the gazelle. Why? They don't have to. They just go and grab it and do whatever they want. So this was United States since 1991 up to about uh, a year and a half ago. They lost the ability to negotiate, to give and take. Why? They don't have to. They do not have to. And that's a problem. Even Saudi Arabia switched sides. You can't control it. Is with China and Russia, BRICS country, is, became a BRICS, uh, BRICS uh, member. Turkey is, you know, and many others. And this is the consequences of poor judgment, not poor judgment. It was good judgment, but backfired. It's a war out here. So when you say, well, the United States made a, a mistake, it made a mistake as a consequence because look what happened and I didn't expect it to grow that big. But that was not a mistake. They did it consciously. They said, we're going to do it now. Now or never. And now they choose now. Why? Kill it before it grows. You know that song, I shot the sheriff? Now that's what it is. Kill it before it grows. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.